All right, so what do we do? What do we do? First, I assumed they were, uh, I assumed they were moving together. So I, I did my free body diagram. I summed the forces in X. I found the acceleration in X. All right, but I need to make, I need to solve for the force of friction to make sure that my force of friction is possible. How do I solve for the force of friction? Well, I've got to open it up. You got to open it up, okay? And then my force of friction is in my free body diagram. So I want to draw a free body diagram just of A. And I'm, I apologize, I didn't give you room in your notes. If you either write really small or uh, find somewhere else uh, to write this. All right, so there's my free body diagram right there. And I am going to sum the forces in the, I can sum the forces in the, yeah, let's sum the forces in X, uh, force of friction equals mass, what's the mass of A? 50, and what's the acceleration of A? I just solved for it up here, five, okay? So what did I just solve for? I just solved that the force of friction needs to be 250, okay? So what do I need to do? I need to ask myself, is that possible? Can the force of friction get up to 250? Well, what is FF max mu S times N? What is N? First of all, the N that we're going to use for, no, sorry. The N that we're going to use for the maximum, mu S times N, is the N in between the two, the N between A and B, not the N between the ground and B. So let me solve for that N by summing the forces in Y. N between A and B uh, minus 59.81 equals 490.5. Okay, so now that I've got the N, I can find FF max USN point five times four ninety point five two forty five point two five. All right. So is this is what I found. Is that two fifty possible? No, the maximum it could ever get up, the extreme value would be the two forty five. So I need to rework knowing that it is slipping. And, and I, th I think I will try to redo this problem. Still have a good bit of, of work left to do. All right. So do you see what, see my method? Uh, I like to, I assumed it didn't slip. I solved the force friction, needs force friction 250 in order for it to not slip. Is that 250 possible? No, because the maximum US times in is only 245. So let me rework, knowing that it is slipping. So now that it is slipping, can I reuse that free body diagram right here and this equation? No, that, that free body diagram, is, they're no longer moving together with the same acceleration. So I can't reuse that. Uh, can I reuse this free body diagram? Uh, sure, yeah, I can reuse that free body diagram. And now I know, so I'm going to reuse this A, uh, N, B, A, the weight. I probably don't have to redraw it. Force of friction. But now I know this force of friction, now that I know it is slipping, is mu K times N. So summing the forces in the X direction would be a point, would be the force of friction, which is, 0.3, the kinetic force of friction, times N, which I really should come down here and sum the forces in Y to get N. But if I look at this equation up here, my, the equation for Y did not change. I'm sorry, I should have written sum of the forces equals zero. And so N is equal to uh, four. 90.5 so n is still 490.5 right I could, I could redo that y equation but that y equation is still the same because some force in y equals ma there's still no a in y uh, so n is still 490.5 equals mass times acceleration in the x so the acceleration in the x would be 2.94 meters per second squared all right and now to get the acceleration of block b I need to draw a free body diagram of block B, which I haven't done before. 
All right, let's do this. I like to show this because this is an interesting free body diagram of things when you have objects on top of each other. All right, so how I like to do this, what forces are acting on block B? Uh, let's put the weight of B, 10 times 9.81, okay? I've got this 300 Newton force right there. That was just from P, to, that was just drawn on the figure. I don't have to worry about any force or friction between there, between the ground and B, because there's wheels, let's say small, weightless, massless wheels, no friction between there. Uh, but I do need to think about the friction between here. A feels the friction to the right, B feels the friction equal and opposite to the left. It's still 0.3 in between B and A, uh, which is still 490.5. Okay, so it still feels that friction. Now, how, how do you like to think about the weight of A pushing down on B, uh, that's the normal force. So there, instead of thinking this as the weight of A pushing down on B, because technically right now it is, it's really the normal force. It's not always equal to the weight. This time it is. But it's really the normal force acting down. The normal force of A on B, which is the same as the normal force of B on A. And then one more thing. Uh, the Normal force of the ground pushing up. Normal force of the ground pushing up. But you see these two in green, those internal forces, just make sure they're equal and opposite of what A would feel, right? B pushes on A, but A pushes on B. Friction, there's friction between A and B. One feels it one way, one feels it the other. All right, so there I think is a good free body diagram. And so now I can sum the forces in X, 300 minus 0.3, 490.5 equals mass times, and notice I'm only looking at B. I'm only looking, looking at the mass of B. Acceleration in the X, 15.3 meters per second squared. <laughs> <clears throat> Do those values make sense? I was hoping they would be moving together, and if they were moving together, they'd be going at five. They would be accelerating at five meters per second together. But there's not enough friction. Maybe the coefficient's not large enough. Maybe those weights aren't large enough. So what's really happening is block B is getting pulled at 5.3, a is only getting pulled at 2.94, but it's still coming forward. Do you notice that A, it's not like A goes backwards. You know when you're, you're pulling the tablecloth, everything is still going forwards. It's not like anything goes backwards. Now we'll talk about, well, we won't talk about rotation and moments because right now we're just thinking everything's particles. All right, but pulling the tablecloth, you really should be thinking about um, rotation, making things don't tip making sure things don't tip over. You know, if you've got something with a high center of gravity uh, and you have a force down here, it might topple over.